Today we have a 1936 Ford truck and this old girl's been sitting for 56 years. So, well, we're gonna get her running. Uh, she was parked in about 1968 in a barn in Tennessee. She originally came from Ohio where she was a grain truck used on a farm, but I'm gonna say the reason she was parked was due to it needing the valves gone through. There's a broke valve here. So either he had a terrible time getting them out or maybe a valve got stuck and it broke or something got in the cylinder. But all in all, the cylinders look good. You can still see they're shiny there in a few places. And for having the heads off of it for 56 years, she looks really good. Let's see if she's got some oil in her. I'm sure she does. She's full on the oil. You can see somebody has went through here in the past years and they'd buy oil and, you know, pour it on her to keep her from rusting up real bad, which is probably what saved the engine because moisture normally gets to these things. Shouldn't be too hard to get her loose. We're going to put valves back in her, clean her up real good. Down in here is just full of dirt and dust because she's been sitting in an old shed with, you know, everything from sawdust to who knows what going in there. And that oil really sticks it on there real nice and good. She's in a lot better shape than most of the ones we get. The tires actually do hold air. The two dual tires are there. She used to have the grain sides on her years ago. On the interior, we do have the hood, luckily. And she has 28,370 miles on her. And this is a original corn cob from in Ohio when she was a grain truck. Also something that's really awesome is it has this right here, the protection record. And you can see in 1937, she had nine, I mean 18,612 miles on her. And in four of 38, she had 19,616 miles. So in 37, she was driven quite a bit. And it has the service station number here. So if someone knows how to look up these records, we could figure out exactly where she was serviced at because right there's your store number. And the other one is 1154, and this one is, no, it's 1254 as well. So they're both at the same place in Ohio, but the gauges are good. The seat's a little crispy. We're gonna pressure wash her up, roll her inside, cause it's gonna take a while to get the head gaskets and all the engine parts, cause it takes a while to get parts for these things sometimes. The hood has been sitting on the roof of this thing for, you know, a good, 56 years but it's inside now we'll put this back on everything's on it we are missing a hood ornament but all in all she's a good old truck the clutch works the brakes work so we're gonna get her running and get her back on the road we're gonna go ahead pressure wash her up and roll her inside and when we get the parts i'll get back with went you ahead guys. and rolled the truck inside so i guess we're kind of cheating on this video because we're not laying in the mud today but we're gonna go ahead and uh, drain the oil out of this old girl. We drilled some more holes in that oil catch pan, so hopefully it don't end up on the floor. And we gotta clean all this mess out. That's from the paraffin wax oil that was used in this old girl. Uh, it just makes an absolute mess. We're gonna hang some LED lights up here in a minute so you guys can maybe see a little bit better. But we're gonna go ahead, pull that oil drain plug and hope for the best. We are gonna pull the oil pan off this truck because we wanna make sure there's no loose rods or anything because I'm pretty sure he parked it because it needed a valve job, but you never know, and I don't want to put it all back together and have a rod knock. Also, we don't want to leave junk in the oil. We went ahead and loosened this oil drain plug up, and hopefully we don't make a mess here, because we are inside, and I really don't want this all over the place. And the moment of truth. What? Uh, it's just straight goop. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go get something to poke that with. Uh, wasn't expecting that. You can see it's all plugged up because I checked the oil pan and it had more oil than what it was supposed to in it. And, uh, I guess it's kind of just, you know, frozen there. It's turned into grease either or. Oh, now let's see. That's still not a good sign. Now, that is gonna take a month of Sundays to drain because I know it's over full of oil and it's just barely a trickling out of there. 
Hopefully there's not too much for this drain pan because we'll probably just leave it overnight and let it do its thing. So we've now successfully removed the oil pan. It took some doing and this is why we pulled it. If you look at all that nasty stuff, that was right here. The circle is where the oil pickup was sitting and it's completely plugged with this stuff. Most of the time they're not this bad. But since this hasn't been on the road since 68 and since it had paraffin wax oil in it and since it set with the uh, basically everything exposed all of everything all the dirt all the dust all the rat nest all the sand went down to the bottom of the oil pan this stuff's rather nasty it's about two inches deep a little bit of a line where the rings were set but i don't believe we'll have any stuck rings on this old girl the pistons that we need to clean up are up at top dead center so that's gonna work out perfectly did it push any of these lifters for us no we're gonna have to fight them out of there but I'm gonna go ahead and throw that oil pan on there. And since we can't really film that too good, I'll get back with you. some valves back in this thing well they got the oil pan on there that was a big fight to get it on there because we didn't pull the uh pulley balance or whatever you want to call it off of there but we got it on there and uh got her back inside so the intake valves on these have a seal on them this year model didn't but these are out of a 53 mercury which didn't have many miles on it so we're just going to reuse them so this one goes in the intake spot and they normally slide in easy but the exhaust it's always a different story on them. You kind of got to give them some adjustment here or some encouragement. I'm sure someone's going to say something about not lapping them, but it'll be fine. You don't remove a whole lot of material when you lap these valves. You'd have to do it forever. So if there was a big difference, it wouldn't fix it. And just like this, it should work and we shouldn't have no problems with it. Hopefully. I'm sure since I've said that, Something will go catastrophically wrong, but that one went in. And all these valves on these flatheads are basically the same. All the way from 32 all the way up to when they quit making them. It's kind of weird that none of these are open, but that's probably how it's supposed to be. Huh. Maybe he took the valves out because the cam was flat. I looked and there's still lobes on it, but we're going to make sure here in a second. On that cam looks like it should, and uh, we will clean up the dirt that's in that cylinder and whatever you want to call it, carbon. Now these things right here hold your valves in place and some days these things want to be your friends and some days they want to be your worst enemy. So we're going to go ahead and try and see if we can uh, throw them in there. And even with all this light, you can barely see down in the block. Let's see here. Don't know which light we want to use. There. If you're working on a flathead, you have to have this thing or you ain't gonna be able to put it together. Just kind of goes in there and you hope you get it in the right spot and you try to jam these in there. Oh, it might, this might be our lucky day. That one was easy. One down. 15 more to go. And number, what is this number? Second valve where Dylan's already putting up a fight. Let's jump to the third one. And same thing. There. We cleaned all these up and the valve bores so we could do this easier and well it's kind of panning out oh 
Yeah, one more. And these, since they're the stock valves, you don't have to adjust them. They're already where they're supposed to be. Maybe. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fight with these. And once we get this side done, we'll get back with you and we'll show you the other side. Because it seems like it's going to take a little bit of time. I went ahead, we cleaned the other pistons up. We cleaned the cylinders out. We put all the valves in here. All of them are held into place. We spun it over with the old hand crank all the valves valve lights so the next thing to do is throw the heads on this old girl we are going to use some of the good old copper spray gasket on the new head gaskets because recently we haven't had good luck with head gaskets sealing we've cleaned everything up but it's better just to throw that on there just to make sure she don't see so it's time to go ahead and throw this head on there we got the uh, head gasket all nice and copper coated we probably didn't have to do that but the past few of these we put head gaskets on they've kind of seeped uh, coolant so we figured we better just be safe and sorry this time around. Let's see here. Ain't much room in here to maneuver. Not at all. That right there should be the winning ticket. Let's see here. Well, I lied to you. There we go. They should just bop on there. And that's the first time the head's been on there since 1968. We do have to replace this water pump. This hose looks good, so that might save us a good $30 or $40 on now. Let's see. We got a good old box of miscellaneous bolts, washers, and other things in here. And I'm assuming that these, you know, probably fit the head bolts. And I think we might even have enough washers here. Should have done this in some type of order. So we went ahead, we got the heads torqued down on their new head gaskets, all that fancy stuff. And, uh, it's now time to put the intake on there, but first we're going to soak everything real good in the good old Vaveline racing oil because it's got the vitamins and minerals that this old truck needs in it. Make sure we get all the uh, lifters nice and soaked because we did change the uh, camshaft. Well, not the camshaft, all the lifters around, so we might have to break them in again. And it takes a long time for that stuff to drain down. Also, a neat thing about these Vaveline's is they have this little breather thing here and it makes it where it pours out a whole lot easier. Let it dry for a while, so now we're gonna go ahead and throw the old intake on here. I already went ahead and, you know, cleaned it up a little. So there's no dirt in it, at least. Next goal is just to get it on, yeah? That, maybe. Oh, it's got that tiny little hole. There we go. Now, got to there. Figured we was gonna have trouble with the good old spark plug tubes. There we go. And bada bing, bada boom. She's on there. Well, not yet. There's a line that pin or two we're missing on. Or three, maybe. Where is she? Let's 
said land. Hey. Nathan, it's a little wobbly. We'll make it work. Now the coil is built into the top of these, kind of like HEI distributors. It's kind of weird, but right there's your coil and it runs on this little dude right here. Oh, there we go. Right there. Right there, well, crap. Let's see here. Now you can see it runs on this little guy in here. And that's what distributes your spark between the points because they're offset. It's like a little, kind of looks like a blender rotor thing. And it just gets your spark where it's supposed to be. And the points are right in here, so it's a pain in the butt to get to them. We do have another one of these. It's an updated version that we could put on here, but we're going to clean this one up and uh, see how she works. We're just going to run 12 volts to the 6 volt and hope she holds up. We put the plug wires on there. We put the distributor back on there. That was an absolute pain in the butt. I didn't film any of that because wasn't no good way to film putting the distributor on or cleaning the points in that thing. They're an absolute nightmare to do. And we have our carburetor here. We haven't rebuilt this one. We probably will end up needing to, but we filled her full of gas just to see if the seals would rehydrate and stuff. So we're going to throw her on there and see what we get. Before we put... Uh, the radiator hose is back on and water in it and everything back together. I'm going to start it up and make sure that the distributor is going to work because once you put the hoses and all that fancy stuff on there, it makes it a lot harder to get that distributor off to fix things. And we do have another fuel pump for this. We just have to put it on there and hopefully it's good. It's a new old stock when we got off the eBay. So, it may be, it may work or the seals may be dried out in it. When I put the intake on this thing, I heard it crunch this, so the diaphragm probably broke in it. We did put the brand new starter on there. We do have the coil hooked up and we haven't bolted this spark plug tube down. There's two intake bolts missing because them wires are rather frayed. So it probably ain't gonna do very good on sparking. So we're about to see what we get. We got all the bolts on the carburetor tied down. The plug wires are kind of on there. Starter's hooked up. We have a, uh, can't think of the name of it. The thingy that makes it where the points don't burn, a resistor. So there should be gas in that carburetor. We got gas here and if we're lucky, she'll fire off. <laughs> Sounded good too there for a second. Come on, give you a little bit of gas. That was rather short lived. I swear it hit right there on the first go. Just room and it wanted to go, but it didn't stay going. Are the throttle blades open? Oh yeah, that's my fault. Let's see here. There we go. Now, now we got her whooped. A little bit of that. Guarantee you she'll hit this go around. I know you want to run. 
What was that choke up? Maybe she's just cold natured. apart for you know 56 years in the old garage and we cleaned her all out and i gotta say she runs good and you can see she don't even smoke that bad we started her up inside and there's hardly any smoke for what we normally get i mean we clean the pistons and stuff off but still the rings seem good the valves seem like they're opening and closing good we didn't even lap them in there i didn't think we needed to and it seems like we were right oil pump seems to be working Camshaft seems to be fine. There's no rod knocks. There's nothing wrong with this old girl. I'm going to say she was pulled inside for a valve job and it never got finished. So we're going to go ahead and pull the carburetor back off of there. It seems our plug wire situation is working. We may have to put some tape on these here because as you can see, I just kind of got them set in there. We are going to hook the water pumps up. Uh, I mean, the whatever those is up down there in a minute. We have... I'm laying right up there and we have a bunch of clamps. We have to replace this water pump and that one because it's broken. This one's missing. Throw a belt on it and we're going to get this old girl driving. And hopefully we can drive her down the highway. And I think the mechanical brakes should work because they hardly ever don't. As you can see, all the linkage is still doing linkage things and it's all there. So we should be good there as long as the radiator holds water. I'm going to get back with you guys once we're putting the good old radiator hoses on there. And I think we're going to have a good old running and driving 1936 Ford. take the old girl for a test drive for the first time in 56 years. We put some air in the tires, and you may wonder, how many PSI air did we have to put in these tires from 19 and 35? Was it 25, 30, 35, 40? Try 47 pounds of air before they, uh, you know, kind of look like tires again. And they started making some popping noises. This one has 47 in it. This one over here has like 49 in it. And if you notice, it's pretty round. They say the maximum tire pressure was 50 pounds per square inch back in 1935. But I figure since things were made better back then, they'll hold probably 100. And this one back here is the same way. This one, it still has a somewhat of a flat spot. But after like 60 pounds of air, she rounded out. Uh, hopefully they hold together when we start driving her, but we're going to go ahead put you guys on the tripod pull this thing out of here and well here in a minute We should have her on the highway I'm not sure if the brakes work yet. We'll have to test that in the yard before we endanger the uh, You know the whole town I guess we do have some seepage up here from the radiator hoses They kind of like to drip on this side, but not too bad We'll just carry some water with us when we take her for a drive Fuel pump's doing fuel pump things, but it loses prime if it sets for a little while. That's kind of a problem. That was a pain in the butt, but the belt does belt things. A little loose, but the water pump's working. Well, we're going to tape these on there, and 
I'm going to get back with you guys when we're pulling her out of the shop here. kind of drop stuff all through the yard but it did i was able to shift from first to second going up that hill so i think it came loose for a second or two because i whomped on it then pulled it down but i may have just been able to do that by you know floating the gears but i'm not sure To, you kind of got to lay into them real good. She's a rolling right now. She ain't supposed you to be doing clutch that. loose. You can see our seating arrangement here. We got the good old, uh, I think that's a five lug Ford rim seat. Uh, we don't have any seat belts because it didn't come with them and you don't need them anyway. The brakes do kind of work. They weren't good enough to where we won't kill nobody. Uh, we do have to put some more air in this tire and I'm going to spray them down with some PB blaster just for good measure. And we got a whole bunch of crap to get off the bed and I think we'll be on our way downtown in a minute. We're gonna do on filming this, but we're gonna get her on the road, then we're gonna, you know, try filming from there, because it's quite the turn to get out of the driveway. Here. The best idea. She does have quite a few flat spots in the old tires. Uh, but so far, so good. She's just a little bouncy. We do have cars flying up on us, but, you know, we're gonna make it where we're going eventually. I don't think people are too happy.
driving. We didn't get no shots of it going down the road other than in the cab. We would have drove it further. We only drove it a few miles, but the flat spots in these tires are so bad it about will bounce you out the door and about bounce the rim out. It's bounced about three of our gallons of gas out of our five gallon jug out. And uh, this thing is incredibly loud. The stability control on this camera that keeps it from bouncing as bad and the noise canceling really saves y'all guys from being dizzy and deaf because I'm gonna tell you, this thing is, she rides rough. We need to put an exhaust system on it. Oh, there goes the state trooper. Good thing we got this thing back home a second ago. But she runs good, she didn't overheat. I mean, it does really good for what it is. The brakes are kind of crappy because they need some oil. I did oil them, but we need to go through them, adjust them a little bit, get that fixed. Our seat held up real good. It's a good seat, except for you lay on the brakes, it slides you backwards. All in all, this tire, it lost air pretty quick. Our air tank was about to bounce off of there, but all in all, we got her running, we got her driving, we got her put back together, we got her back on the road. And I gotta say for being tore apart, sitting in a garage for 56 years full of dirt and everything else this old girl runs good drives good and well she's gonna be put back to work thank you guys for watching please consider maybe leaving a like or subscribing because we got a lot more cool content coming and we're gonna be putting glass in this thing i'm not sure if we'll show that but we're gonna put glass in it clear coat it and get her back where she's you know a good working truck